Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. We're down at Mr. Vanos with our mint green M4, and it's missing an engine. That's because we're starting our journey to a thousand horsepower. Let's go speak to Steve and find out what's going on. So we are now in Steve's engine building room. How are you doing, Steve? Yeah, good, thanks. So this is my engine. It is. Taken apart. It is, it is yeah. yeah. So the reason we've taken it apart is not because there's anything wrong with it. We've done a nine second quarter mile on pump fuel now. Yes. And we know we want to push this engine further and we believe the rods are going to be a weak point in the future. So we just want to future proof it now before we start pushing on and doing hybrid turbos and trying to get that quarter mile time down even further. Is there anything you've noticed different about this engine compared to S55? Obviously, S55 had the problem with the crank hub. Yep. Also, rod bearings, which has been Achilles heel of BMW engines for a long time. How have BMW addressed it on this? Um, the crank hub fix is now completely solved. doesn't exist anymore. They've now molded the chain wheel as part of the crankshaft itself. Mm -hmm. So the teeth are on the end of the crank. So yep. it just doesn't have a separate part. Okay. It's straight. The S55 was always a bit of an oddball engine anyway, because it was a separate part. They either had keyways on or they had part of the crank. So that's gone forever now, not a problem. Um, Rod bearings are a really interesting one. Didn't expect to see this when we took it apart, but they've basically made the bearings five to seven more wider than S55. Okay. They've kind of gone back in time to sort of E30 era where they've got a huge width in the rod bearing. And that just spreads a load across the bearing more, gives it more oil film, and just makes it a lot stronger. So hopefully they've kind of learned the lessons from all these years of <laughs> A long time now of rod bearing failures and people have made businesses from this you know yeah. and they've hopefully addressed that problem so we shall see okay anything else interesting you've noticed while you've been disassembling it just how strong it is the block itself is really wide on the deck um there's a lot of material around everywhere it looks like it's been built to last and built for strength it doesn't look like an older bmw six-cylinder engine it looks like they've put a lot of thought into this it's almost like they've made it a tuner engine which they haven't but it's they've yeah. kind of accounted for it maybe being tuned in the future so i mean a lot of people are referring to this as a next 2 jz yeah. engine because it almost feels like bmw made it so it could be a crate engine and put into loads of other cars in the future it does look that way it looks it's just a really strong well engineered engine block and yeah and the head's really interesting as well because it's 3d printed there is 3, 3d printing in the exhaust parts i think we're just looking at the edge of the parts, but I think there's more inside there. Without cutting a head in half, you're not going to know what's in there, to be fair. And yeah. You don't want to do that, but um, it is it is just a really interesting engine. The timing chain is now at the back, where it used to be at the front. Uh, that's the only change over an S55, those three things, really. So. Okay. And then one of the things that we're doing to future-proof it is we know that the rods were an issue on the S63 and S63 TU engines, and we've proven that you only need to change the rods in those cars, yeah. and we've both had a 1,000 horsepower. Mine's done a 9.7 quarter mile, yours has done a 9.3 9 now, yeah. So, you know, they're very, very quick cars. You've beat your car for I don't know how long now, and it's proven to be, you know, what we needed on that platform. So we're gonna do a similar thing on this initially. You have to remember, guys, that we are actually doing R&D at this point. We don't know if this is gonna be the way forward. We think it is, but we're gonna put it in, and we're gonna try it and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, the way to look at it is, we know it worked on the S63. It's proven it, there's our cars run for 15 months now, so it yeah. just works. And it's to look at it and say, well, what do you need to change? Mm -hmm. How many things do you need to change? Can you just change everything? Yeah. And you don't know if you need to change some of those parts again, so the same thing. So yeah. this engine comes from the factory with Marlow Motorsport pistons, the same as an S63 and all BMWMs from you know, back in the day. And we know they're good enough for 1,000 horsepower. Yeah, I mean, yeah. mine's running way more than 1,000 yeah. now, so there's no issues with the pistons. So just looked at, basically looked at the engine, what needs to be changed. And the weak point, as we know, and what we've seen from other people around the world is rods bending. Mm. And so I just thought exactly the same process as X63, replace the weak point and then move on and see what goes next. So as we found out with our engine, it, there isn't that much after that. No. So, and the pistons are really good from factory, these ones, because they're forged. These right? are, yeah, these are forged M142 forging, which is a really good quality forging. And realistically, they're made by Marlow Motorsport, so they're, they're good, they're gonna run forever. So you've got the benefits of a road piston, which isn't gonna wear out in 20,000 miles. Yeah. And you've got a little bit stronger piston as well. So arguably, you could do with a stronger piston in a six cylinder because you've got more horsepower per cylinder. Mm -hmm. So if you're pushing for a thousand horsepower in a six cylinder, there's more load per cylinder on that. 
Right. So you do want a stronger piston, really. So, but they've already addressed it for us. So. Okay. Which comes back to the is there a tuner engine? <laughs> yeah, there is a lot. It's a, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So there's also a myth that the S63 TU rod and the S58 rod are the same, but you've got them laid out here, and they're quite obviously not the same rod. No, no. You can see it. No, I mean, the stroke on the S58 is different anyway, so the rod will be longer. Um, so that instantly wipes out the fact that it's the same rod. It can't be. Um, whether it's a bit of lost in translation, you know, the, the end of the rod is the same in terms of in how they're doing it now. They haven't got a bush anymore. It's basically a machine finish and they use a diamond like coated piston pin, which is the same as an S63. So that technically is a carryover. Um, but the width of the bearing is the thing that changes it more than anything. Mm -hmm. So there's an S58 bearing. Yeah. And that there is your yeah, S55. That's quite a big difference, isn't it? It's a huge yeah. difference. Yeah. The other difference is the fact that the journal size itself is different. So it's a smaller bearing. Oh, smaller. S63 has a bigger journal itself. So, yeah, it's not a carryover pass. There's probably elements of it that are the same. It looks like the material itself is probably the same and the shape of the rod and the strength probably looks the same. But yeah. it's a bit of a myth. Well, we already know people bending rods on stock turbo, so we know that's going to be a problem yeah. later down the line. So there's no point trying to risk it like everyone else has. No, no but looking at everything else, it, the best thing to do is start on the bottom, change the rods, and that's going to eliminate the risk of bending rods. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you should never need to change those again. So. Yeah. so apart from the rods, is there anything else we're going to do at the same time on this engine build? Uh, this build, all we're going to do is put some head studs in. Mm -hmm. And two reasons, A, the stronger, and B, the plan is to pull the head back off in future and do some head work. Yeah. So it's just going to stay messing around. You just, if you have it on and off a few times, it, they're reusable. Yeah. So, and we do know people, I've heard of people lifting heads when they're starting putting different turbos on. Okay. So this is going to eliminate it from the start. It's just done now and that's one less thing to worry about. So. Yeah, so on this round of engine build and tuning, we're going to leave the head as it is, tune it on stock turbos, tune it on hybrid turbos, and then pull the head again and then do the head work just so we know that there's a tangible difference between the two. Yeah, it'd be good to have a back-to-back. -back. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think we did talk about maybe doing it now, but when you, it doesn't give us any benchmark any yeah, or baseline to work from. So yeah. we'll look at all the data we need right now. We know what the car can do. We can offer someone a package of a different head, mm -hmm. and this is what we'll get benefit from that head work. So. Yeah, so essentially it comes down to that whole finding what works and what doesn't work, because we could do that head right now, and we could have X amount of power, we don't actually know what that's done. Yeah. So everyone else would benefit from us running it and then pulling the head, doing the work, and then putting it back in again, and then actually seeing what that difference makes. Yeah, yeah. we might get another 100 horsepower from the head work alone, but equally we don't know that, do we? No. So we might get nothing from it. Yeah, that's definitely the, the right way forward. Yeah. Yeah. While adding more power to the S58 engine, it's going to be important to carry out some other modifications in terms of cooling. That's why we have the CSF uprated heat exchange. So this is bigger than the stock item and help to keep the inlet temperatures in check. Along with that, we are also fitting an uprated transmission oil cooler because we're going to be putting a lot of power to the ground and we want to maintain oil temperatures at the correct level. Not only this, but we are also building the transmission. So it's currently over in America at Pure Drivetrain Solutions and that is going to be built to support the power that we want to make out of the car. Now we know that is also a weak point because we've seen cars in the community that have blown up once they start running a certain amount of power and we just want to future proof everything. And we've also seen that in F90s, once you start taking them well above a thousand horsepower, it does become an issue. So hopefully with all this in the car, we can really push forward and see how much power we can make. So that's enough talking for today. I'm going to leave Steve to put all of these parts back together put the engine back in the car and I'll join you when the car's running.
So the Mr. Vanos engine has been running as has the pure drivetrain solutions gearbox, but let's be honest, you don't build an engine just to run stage two power. And the keen eye amongst you will notice I'm holding two Mosselman hybrid turbos. So the next stage is to put these on with all the supporting mods and go for 1000 horsepower. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you liked the video, please remember to smash that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. If you want to join the conversation, please drop a comment below and we'll try our best to respond to you. If you want to watch more of this project, you can do so over here. If you want to watch what YouTube thinks you might like from our other content, you can do so over here.